Hi, and welcome to That's So Nova. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, hey, how you doing? Um, today we're going to be doing a Aura Rosa tutorial. We're going to be doing the Quilted Alice shoulder bag. Now, this shoulder bag um, can be quilted, rivet tufted, or it can be left with no treatment and just show a really nice, sleek, clean look. Um, the handle comes in three lengths. You can pick a short, medium, or long. And it's fully enclosed zipper main closure. And the inside, there's a nice slip pocket and a zipper slip pocket. And you turn this bag through the lining and you close it up with the zipper inside. This bag, this bag, okay, even when I showed it to my husband yesterday, this belongs at any boutique. Like, this is a gorgeous bag. I'm not just saying that because I made it. <laughs> no, um, I had, I, I was contemplating the longest time what I was going to um, tuft it with. I had orange spikes, but it just didn't look great with this. Um, so I went for a multitude. I had one size really big rivets, as you can see here, but I only had 50. Now you need like 60 of these rivets for this tufted look, and I didn't have enough. Um, so I decided to change around the pattern and have small and big so it could be just like something else to look at. This bag has purse feet that are optional. And the, what, like I said, in the this could be, you can either do a tufted, there's a quilting, a really beautiful quilt quilting way you could do it or you can leave it just blank there's this bag comes with a lot of different options you can do and I like it just like how you can choose if you're going to have a small medium or long like this one has a medium size and you just choose if you're going to have um strap-ins you can you can't and I can show you I could tell you different ways when we get to that area what you can do in case you don't have strap-ins that match you have a double zipper pull in here <laughs> I can't show you all of the inside. Well, you probably can't tell. The, the fabric says some inappropriate cra crass words. But I felt like it was really chic, so it had to have a little bit of my personality. <laughs> it's like sophisticated in the outside, but party girl on the inside. I can't, I don't want them to be like, oh, Shanova, clutch your pearls. No, There's a, <laughs> there you have, you have your, um, cork fabric you have an exterior on both sides there's a slip pocket and in the inside there's a nice zippered and slip pocket so you have pockets galore you have a really classy look and this could be if you're doing this for your size you can like I said this, the straps fit small medium or large I went for a medium and again you have a fluffy girl here and I will be able to wear this comfortably out if I was going out a night on the town or just because I like to have a fancy purse. There's nothing wrong with having a fancy purse 24 seven, just throwing that out there. <laughs> um, a large would have probably hit a little bit underneath my bra line and I would have been fine with that. I don't think I could have got away with a small, but again, I'm five nine and I'm fluffy. So there's, it's nice for people that are petite, like my mom that are really, really small, that to have the option to have a smaller strap to help out. And there's just cool, strap on features this back comes together beautifully and we are going to get this started let me move this bag over here so a couple of tools i'm going to go over some things that i did and give you a suggestion i'm going to do the tufted look again but i wanted to show the more playful side of this bag where it could be more playful meets elegant so there are a slew of information we just went on page seven basically broke down and showed you where the handles the connectors the main panels are and it shows you if you're going to do the no exterior treatment the rough uh rivet tufted or um rivet tufting or your quilting and it shows you all the hardware you need it explains what you would need to do like if you have the no treatment you would put use your decaville light um for your bag if you're using a um, tufting treatment, we would go for a, a flex foam. I use Annie Soft and Stable. And then like a woven inner feet facing to place over so it doesn't wrinkle when we're pulling it through. And that you use the same treatment if you were going to be quilting it. Uh, on pages 13 and 14, she breaks down how you do the quilting. I definitely plan on making one of the quilting ones because I'm intrigued. 
I'm like really intrigued with her method. So, and it like the diamonds just like really puff out. She even goes and, um, and shows you how you could divide this up into four different packs so it can be easier for you, which, you know, I'm a fan because that's a, a lot of people can't sit down and make the bag in one go. This one you can, cause it's, it comes together beautifully, but the majority of the, of the work is done in prepping. If you look at her pattern, this pack, this, this, this pattern is like less than 31 pages, I believe. Let me double check. Yeah. 31 pages. Prepping is pages one through 15. That, so that tells you for in 15 pages, you could be done with it, but that everyone has lives. Everyone has other things that they're trying to focus on. So this could be broken down into four days. Do pack one, one day, pack two, pack three, and then four and you're done. But if you were going to sit down and one go, it's very achievable to do this in a day. Um, so we're going to start with, I want to first, I actually want to show you how I did the tucked it. So on the back of your, your thing, of your uh, fabric, you have your vinyl or your cork or your um, leatherette, whatever you have in front of you, you're going to draw. What I did is I drew my half inch seam, um, um, down and across here and I place the foam on top. And then I used, uh, I believe Visaline for my woven inf interfacing. And I just try to make sure I pressed really well inside this so it can hold it nice and still. Then what I did, I'm going to show you this without trying to show you the pattern is I took the pattern piece and I made two. I punched out all the holes. And as you can see, remember, I just said I, with the original one, I was going to do black and orange rivets. As you can see, <laughs> I write out everything. I'm it's, that's just who I am. So I don't forget. I punched out all the holes and then I took a really bright color on this one. I think I used a green marker and I drew out each one of the holes. Then what I did from there is I took a mat. I have a cutty mat. That's a bigger one. That's been damaged that gets holes. I took a mat. I took my mallet. I took my drill bit and I punch all the holes. Now you can go and try to do this with a, um, a rivet. I mean, sorry, a, a ring press, uh, a ring press, uh, a, a hole puncher. Yeah. But there's like, you're going to have to scrunch to get things. It was just easier for me to lay it on an old mat and just pop, 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 pop. And if you were in my workroom on an everyday basis, you will know I use these, I use drill, I use punch holes all the time. I, I need to really invest and get the punch hole sets for, um, my, rivet press, but again, there's only so far I can reach in without you scrunching it. Now I'm going to show you. So you see all the back here is copper. You'll see one gold. When I flip it, I have these baby blue rivets. I got told, I was told by another, um, artist maker who makes bags that to conserve and to make your rivets spread out wide. If the back is not going to be seen, which this is will not be, you can use you use a different rivet like so i used all feet all male posts in this one color that i don't use that often and put the heads on the the bag this way this can serve this helps tremendously spread out so this was 30 rivets tells and um males and female portion and by dividing it i was able to use a 30 on here and 30 on here without buying another pack um, I do this a lot with my rainbow rivets because if you put rivets on stuff, you are fully aware that rainbow rivets cost more than any other rivet color because it's anodized and it's popular. So I don't, I didn't have a blue tag. So I just, I'm going with the rainbow because I'm going to use the rainbow for my purse feet as well and some of the zipper tools. So when you're cutting, make sure you flip and have mirror images. If they're both the same piece, then when they're put together, it's going to not, it will not equal up. We have a really great asymmetrical shape that we're going to be doing. Sorry, my, my washer machine is going crazy. All right. So we're going to, that's what I did here. And you can kind of see from the Annie Soft and Stable, you can see that it's kind of tufted. It's kind of pulled together. I really like this look. Um, and I wanted to have some fun with this print. So that's what I did here. We have 
our back and we have our front. I wanted to give you what I did for the pattern piece there. And we're gonna start with page 16. We're gonna gather our first pack, which is just the zipper panels. Now with the zipper panels, I'm pulling out these packs. I, I stuck my, very similar to when we did the Beast, <laughs> AKA or tra travel bag. I keep my um, packs organized by uh, placing the pack number on here and clipping it and just keep it in this little fabric envelope. It saves time, it makes things easier. So we have a, a 17 inch zipper, five inch zipper, and we're going to make a center, not a match notch and uh on here and then we're going to put our um we're gonna put we're gonna sew right sides together ex exterior and wrong right sides together onto the lining and then we're going to turn it and we're going to put a one eighth of inch seam allowance you're going to be noticing that there is a little bit hanging off on each edge do not cut this off keep it it's important and it'll be vital towards the end of it and it, it will make a whole lot of sense. So I highly suggest you make center notches. If you, I have a center notch here, it matches with the center and this center and we're going to sew this at three eighths of an inch. I am using my Juki um, 55, uh, I'm sorry, my 1541S because the thread color that I wanted on here does not cooperate on my 5550 in. <laughs> so this is a 70 weight thread. It's from Celric and it's this baby blue. It matches this fabric really well. Um, and then let's see, I'm, I'm using a 116 needle and I'm mixing, this is a blue, ocean blue cork and I wanted to mix and match with it. And then I have for parts of the lining, I have a baby blue, and then I'm using um, Woven Fix for my um, cotton stabilizers. But you'll see I ha I'm mixing and matching with some of the things I have in here because I had some stuff in my scrap bins, and I was like, why not execute my scrap bin? So I'm like, let's go do it. So we're going to do this at 3 eighths of an inch, and this is, has the lining and the exterior sandwiched in between the zipper the zipper is a baby blue that i believe i got at my handmade space and we're going to trim our threads I'm sorry if you do hear water i work i'm a basement dweller i work in the basement so you'll always hear like the laundry when the AC get kicked on, I'll try to speak up and louder over it. My voice is a little bit deeper, so it doesn't come across loud when I think it does. It's weird. It's very weird. But when I'm excited, you can hear like my high pitched laugh. That's the funny part. Or cackle, my witch's cackle. Um, so I'm bringing the lining to the lining wrong sides to meet the wrong sides of the exterior fabric. And I'm gonna give this a nice little tug because the zipper wants to always sink back into the fabric. Okay, and then we're gonna top stitch just that one eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm at a forced inch length. threads and we have our two 
pieces of our panel, zipper panel done. And we're gonna put this aside and we're gonna start going on to pack two. So on pack two, I'm going to be putting a nice little label. I got this label from Mormino and I've been, it's stitched with love and it's stitched and I'm like, I gotta put this on a next stitch bag. Okay, the prep for this particular pack is vital. And I will explain. On this, you have your zip lining two, zip lining one. Now zip lining two, which is the slightly bigger piece, you're going to stitch at one fourth of an inch or one eighth of an inch. You're gonna base that on and you're gonna put also base on the other side um, right side to the wrong side of the zipper at one eighth of an inch. So when you open it up, you will see lining two and lining one. I highly, highly recommend you to write on the back of your lining because I the bag went together effortlessly with me, but this part, because I didn't do the right pieces, I actually had to take it off and do it again. Um, so we have, once you have your... Um, Zip lining um, one, zip lining one, and zip lining two, like we're looking at figure 41, one and two, we are going to put that aside. Okay, this is the fun part when she, how Alex puts everything, oh, uh, I'm sorry, Alexis puts everything together. So we're gonna grab pocket one. See, I have zipper pocket one, zipper pocket two, and I went to automatically grab the bigger one and that is not what we need to do. We're going to grab our pattern C and we are going to put um, right sides together. But if you look at the um, figure 42, it says bottom of directional fabric up here. So th this is my directional fabric. If I put it this way, that is the top up here. She is exclaiming to put the bottom on here. So pop a couple pins or clips, whatever you have available to you. Alexis is really smart and I really appreciate her doing that because sometimes I avoid putting directional prints into things because I'm afraid that it's going to come out incorrect. So with that being said, we're going to we put pattern, uh, pocket, pattern piece C with pocket one, and we're about to sew th it three eighths of an inch together. Back stitch in the beginning of the end, the beginning and the end. I can't talk today. And if you are looking at this in the side view, um, one is one eighth of an inch, two is one fourth of an inch, three is three eighths of an inch, so on and so forth. So with pocket, zipper pocket one, now you're gonna, you sew, we sewed it down, right? And now we're gonna push it right sides up. And then we're going to take our, the pocket we just put, a. Um, moved away, we are going to take pockets one up. We're going to take the backing, we're going to put the zippy zip liner, the zip lining one. I'm sorry, I'm going to push this to the right side. We're going to put, you're going to take your zipper lining piece that you sewed on step 10 and you're going to align the raw edges to meet the raw edges of pocket one. So here's your pocket one. We're going to place our pocket where you see pocket two opening, which is lining one is going to be facing down. Put these raw edges to raw edges. 
put some pins and let me just explain it again in case you're sewing along with me. We, we, we put pocket um, one exterior piece attaching it to your um, pattern piece C and now we're, we opened up pop the piece. We did not do any top stitching and we're going to take this and we're going to position the zipper down where you see lining piece two because pocket lining piece one is facing is is on uh, top of pocket one. I know it feels like a fusing. Just follow the process. When you see how it turns out, you're gonna be like, oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, we're gonna snip our threads. All right. <clears throat> so right here, when we flip it this way, you'll see that you're gonna see lining piece one up over here. So we're gonna top stitch this part right here at one eighth of an inch. So it's open, that's the back. All right now you do see is there's pattern PC, pocket exterior one, and I can see the, the front, or my writing, <laughs> of um, the zip lining one, and there's the zip lining two is right here. So we're only sewing for the tops, we're only putting the top stitching of one eighth of an inch on our exterior pocket piece. It's kind of like under stitching, okay we're trimming our threads all right Okay, let's see. Now, we're with zipper pocket one, we're going to hold this down. We're going to place zipper pocket one on top. on top of this and we're going to so we have all the lining going down in one direction and we just place zipper exterior pocket two on top of exterior one and we're going to be sewing this at three eighths of an inch it's, it, it's a fun puzzle it works out though okay See. And if you have a zipper, make sure you you if you're gonna move, have your needle down, or be prepared just to move it out of the the seam. All right. We're going to trim our threads. Let's see. All right. And then we're going to Pull down exterior pocket two. We're going to do the same thing we did on the, the exterior pocket one and do one eighth of an inch. All the fabric is going this direction right now, minus the exterior. So the two lining pieces are facing towards the top of pattern C. Let me move this. 
threads all right so on our next step we're going to take both zip linings and we're going to sew at three-eighths of an inch now we're going to have the exterior pieces are facing up with this I made the mistake of this so let me just emphasize this you're going to be sewing this at a three-eighth of an inch and then you're going to cut it down to a one-eighth of an inch do not try to go above your zipper. I would go below the, the last stitches you've seen because if you go too far in, it will mess up the zipper. And then you have to unpick and it's not fun. <laughs> so we're going to do a 3 eighths of an inch and we're going to leave an opening on the bottom because we're going to use this opening to help close up our lining when we're done turning it. So put these together. I'm going to pop a clip or two at the bottom just to ensure that they're always at the same size. And we're going to go three eighths of an inch. Do not sew above your zipper. Back stitch really well at the end. All right, that's one. Yeah, I didn't do that. I was like, yeah, I'm just going to. So it really close and and it says it very clear in the directions do not because it will it will mess with your zipper okay so we're going to trim this down to one eighth of an inch Do not cut your zipper, just trim it down. And then when it gets to that area where it's near your zipper, just kind of veer it off. Sure you get it close as one eighth of an inch as you possibly can because you don't want it to get accidentally get caught up into the seam allowance when we're sewing our sides together it will just make it you could okay grant you you could still use it it just will make your job a whole lot harder when you're trying to turn it okay so right now i'm going to remove these clips and then i'm going to grab my handy dandy ruler and i want this line to come up to the two inch line, like right here, I have these little wings. I'm gonna match it up so it's straight and we're going to pull this over like this and then pop a couple of clips. And I want it to be even on both sides. Okay. We have our pockets. And then we're going to grab pattern piece F. And as you can see, I had a little bit of extra waterproof canvas. And I was like, why not? It matches everything really well. So. We are going to. match this so I'm just trying to make sure everything 
is even as steep, even as I possibly can. do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to tack this on real quick. I'm going to just put a tack on this, this little label. <laughs> Cause every time I try to sandwich it in, it just comes out wrong or fold it. <laughs> And that, you know, you don't want that. <laughs> Matching raw edges to raw edges. Clipping in place. All right. So we're going to sew three eighths of the inch and we're we want to make sure that this doesn't get, you know, into the seam allowance at all. If it does, again, it's not the end of the world. It just, you can unpick it. You can kind of like shift it a little bit out of place so you don't. nice and taut and we're going to stitch one eighth of an inch on pattern piece up. Nothing was attached on that side, so yay. Okay, <laughs> let's do this side three eighths of an inch. And just sorry, I'm gonna my clip had this attached to it. So let's go from here three eighths of an inch. to top stitch just that one eighth of an inch as well. Okay, trim threads. We have our slip pocket and a nice zipper pocket and we'll be using this hole down in here to help um, birth the lining. Well, 
close up the lining. <laughs> so we have one. So we're done with one already. We're going to now work on the slip pocket. Let me get right back to you. I forgot one piece. I knew I was going to forget a piece. Okay. So I had to go to the cutting table and cut an eight and three fourths wide by 15 inch long panel. Um, we're going to be putting right sides together of your pattern piece C with your slip pocket. Um, I'm using a water resistant canvas. Both sides are good. Um, if you were doing a directional, if you were to put right sides together and it was directional, the um, like if the bottom of the pattern uh, print is on this side, it's going to get folded over to create a slip pocket. So when you do right sides together, it's you will want your directional print to be facing the bottom. So that way, if this was all smiley faces and arrows, <laughs> when it comes back, it will be showing on the right side versus the wrong. So that's if you have directional. I did not cut out my direction, so I apologize for that. <laughs> I always forget like one piece though. So here we go. We're gonna do this at three eighths of an inch. Add clips if you need it. Don't if you don't, you know, whatever is easier for you. Back stitch at the beginning and end. Right. And we're going to snip our threads. All right. So what we're going to do is grab our handy dandy ruler and we're going to want to measure one and one fourth of an inch down. And that's where we want our slip pocket to be at. There's an, you, there's an exact measurement of how you need to measure it. You also can do, like throw a couple of clips in before we do this top stitching of this and see if this matches up or do I need to move it down a little bit more. You want, whatever you want to do, make sure it matches up with your pattern pieces because yeah, that would not be great if it doesn't. And then I'm going to just measure it out along this. So I'm going to take this over and I'm going to top stitch this at one eighth of an inch. The measurement, your slip pocket needs to be, um, with the back, it needs to be 11 inches, 11 and one fourth of an inch. is back. We're going to grab right sides so that they're facing each other. I just like to clip both sides while I'm here so I can just flip it around and and 
and sew down the other side without worrying about clipping. All right, so three eighths of an inch. stitch at one eighth of an inch. And I'm having, I'm just folding this over so the seams are facing the outside and not going in. And we're going to top stitch it at one eighth of an inch. I feel like this lining is one of the fastest and convenient um, linings. We have a nice slip pocket. We have a, a second slip pocket and a zipper. It's it's pretty nice. Trim your threads. Okay. So we are going to go, we're going to start on page 22. So we're going to grab one of our zipper panels. Sorry, I'm going to move this closer. We're going to take, bring our zipper panels over. And we're going to take our exteriors and we're going to use staple them. Yes, you heard that correctly. The stapler. So you're just going to take whatever panel piece you have first. You want to make sure when you're doing this, you're going to, I'm going to clip my lining to my zipper teeth so they could stay out of the way. But the, one of the most important parts is to make sure whatever um, whatever zipper section side you use, if in case they vary in height or whatever, you want to make sure you're using it on the same side. Um, like, I mean, you, it's not very, really needed, but it just helps. Like, these are both the exact same size, the little tail ends, and it just, it helps in the end. All right. So what we're going to do is you're going to clip, you're going to clip, me, sorry, clip the gusset with um, your clips. Onto you're doing the zipper panel onto the main panel. Now you're like, Shinova, uh, you didn't find your center. That's because this is asymmetrical and there's one side that's higher than the other. So you want to make sure you cover the top part first. So I tried really hard to do the first zipper panel without any um, staples and I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. And I, I did this, I did the 
stapling and I was so much like I was so satisfied because there was no wrinkles or anything. And you're going to just try to ease this zipper gusset around your clips. It's a curve and it doesn't want to be clipped in place and stuff like that. You just have to be like, I am your master. <laughs> you do like say kind of thing. I accidentally took a, a clip off of the, the lining to clip here. So what I did is I definitely clipped, I first snipped, not snipped, stapled at the beginning and end and I try to do it like at one eighth so I got this staple gun off of Amazon. It's a squeeze and load. It can staple like 80 pages and I'm like, yeah, you can handle fabric. <laughs> the reason why I do it at, um, I try to do it at one eighth and not one fourth is because we're gonna cut down this right to a one eighth of an inch, but I try to cut it where I cut away from the staples and not having to undo them. That didn't work out the best last time, so we shall try. And I'm just smoothing out the fabric as I'm stapling. You probably don't need as many staples as me. Um, <laughs> I like to err on the side of caution. And if you don't want a staple, I could see someone using like, a darning needle and just like clipping it and just doing a couple whip stitches to hold in place to sew it. Just another su friendly suggestion. But in the pattern, you see that there is definitely a staple gun using being used. And there's a reason because it is a it's a huge curve in the bag and you want to make sure that there's no ripples and you want to make sure there's um, that it's like it comes together nicely. So, all right, I'm going to remove this one clip and then I'm going to sew this on at um, Three eighths of an inch. Back stitch in the beginning and at the end. And I just kind of um, hold it and 
let it go into its curve that it's supposed to go. And the reason why you want to do it like under one, the staples under one fourth of an inch is so that the staples don't mess with your feed dog or scratch up the nail bed, the bed of your, um, your machine. can go and remove all the the staples but if you did what I did then you can cut the one eighth of an inch away and don't use don't don't cut over a staple it's not worth it <laughs> way to turn your fabric shoes into paper shoes. Oh god, yeah, and that's not cool. <laughs> okay, and then so it's like all under that one eighth. And then I'm going to take my pinking shears real quickly and go in and make sure our eyes, I stitch. I'm going to use the pinking shears at making this one eighth of an inch seam allowance. Do not cut into your stitches because that will be, it won't be, it's not, I mean, you can restitch above it. It just, it's a nuisance. <laughs> the pinking shears help lays the fabric a little bit nicer you can cut notches in there little snip notches but if you have peaking shears it's not a whole bunch of layers so you'll be okay make it these threads i always say trim your threads and then i see threads hanging out. All right. So we have that and you are, we're going to repeat this same method with our lining. So I'm going to grab a lining. This is the back. So I want the back to have the zipper pocket that's just personal preference what you're gonna do with this is a little it's, it's very similar you're going to um staple and i have a lighter stapler for this because this is just like caught in a waterproof canvas because this has two long sides so what you're going to do is we're going to set this up this one's so much more pliable because it's less fabric so i like to start with the larger on the larger the longer side i'm sorry i can't even talk today and then i'm just going to put a couple clips in here because we're going to be cutting off the excess on this the top so that I can fit the short side of the it's like rough it's roughly about two inches that we're gonna cut off but Okay, I'm going to grab my stapler and start stapling. Okay. 
this fabric is so light. So you're like, why does she have two different staplers? I have a couple different staplers because I was trying to for the longest time to figure out what stapler I can use that can help hold that everyone is talking about. And the squeeze and load one is by far the, the that can hold the most thickest layers, but it has its moments too. And this purple one, I solely got because it was purple and shiny. That was it. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I will buy supplies because they're pretty. <laughs> I mean, we're in the sewing room. Why not have something pretty to look at while we're sewing? I just like this one whole side. Hold on. saying like it's done and I'm sitting here holding this piece really <laughs> the struggle is real for me when it comes down to the stapler all right so we're going to sew this together at using the 3 eighths of an inch too, and then we're going to cut it off and pink it. And then we're going to um, cut off the excess symmetrical part. my AC turning on. that part that's not quite the symmetric trim this down to one eighth of an inch Pink this down too, but definitely remove the staples. Okay, 
So we have one side down. We're going to about to repeat the same thing. And like you can see how it's going to, it's starting to sh take shape of your bag. Let's do this again. Just work with the clips to try to ease the curve in. It's, it is a it's, it is a good size curve, so just work with your fabric. It will work out. I like to, like I said, clip and staple the, the ends first just to ensure that they're, if there's any shifting, it's going to be evenly. It's not going to go more as I go to the top because it's already clipped down. As soon, if this actually wants to clip, that's, that's the thing. That's the key. Exterior started. Three eighths of an inch back stitch really well at the beginning and end. If I can pick up these tails, that would be awesome.
if you're going to remove, you can use like needle nose pliers and have a magnetic bowl um, and put the staples in, or you can just immediately take them by the trash can. Your choice. I got these needle nose pliers many, many years ago at Joann's in the jewelry section. I got them because they were blue. I like baby blue. <laughs> of course. I have pink ones too. Of course. I mean, <laughs> they're used for everything. There are um, stapler removers you can get too that are you know, really good prices that I've seen on Amazon. Um, I'm just really good at uh, pulling things apart, apparently. <laughs> so I have one that's been in my drawer forever and I just haven't used it yet. Let's just put it this way. I, I, the hands are freakishly strong. If there was ever like a zombie apocalypse and you had st staples and you needed me to rip them out, you would want somebody else to do it. Um, because it would be one go and just keep on going. <laughs> if you show the hits, and I'll be like, okay, <laughs> I'm sorry, let me finish. I'm going to, um, Trim this down with some pinking shears at one eighth of an inch. All right, let's get this lining on. And I will show you, you, it is possible to do this without staples. Um, the lining is extremely more easier to do without staples than the exterior, especially if you're using like leatherette, slither. <laughs> There's so many different, um, cork, craft text, vinyl, leather. Staples just give you like not only like a security, but just like you know that the fabric's not going to shift and it just will stay put while you're. Trying to put them together. And I'm going to trim this down. I'm 
it just up and cut off the excess. All right. So I'm gonna put the pinky chairs away, putting the staplers away. We are on page 23. We're going we're part of the final assembly. We're going to put our our exterior and interior pieces aside and we're going to grab our um back pieces you need to your um sorry your bottom your bottom and your handle we're going to grab so we're going to with the bottom you're going to measure in two inches from the um long ends and one and a half inches from the short ends and that's where you're going to place your circle your dots of your feet um there she has a very very cool method with using extra stabilizers that if you're not to get them screwed in same method we have a very similar method except i use a leather washer i make these with scrap leathers that i i have you can make them out of um cork vinyl whatever you have available but whenever i get like any veg tans i make a um either a three eighths or five eighths of an inch circle and then poke a hole like punch a hole in it and that's how i get my purse feet not to move without having tons of bulk so i am going to like i'm going to be using a rainbow purse feeds that are screw in and i'll show you how i install them I want to say I got these from Bringberry. So I'll put my hole, the leather washer hole, and put the screw inside. And I'm going to poke it through the hole. And I will, try, the hole is very small too. Like it's like a regular, like two millimeter punch. Not very big, it just, it's easier that way. Then I'm gonna grab my screwdriver. I'm gonna hold my purse feet how I want them to be installed. And I'm going to screw until there's resistance. So I have my four, my four purse feet. Now make sure um, you have mark your centers. I also marked three eighths of an inch because we're going to be stopping and starting from there. And then I have a faint line that you probably can't see on the exterior side. I'll redo it. And it's three eighths of an inch. I'm using chalk because it fades extremely fast. And this is to like, again, when I'm stopping and starting on the ex putting the exterior together, I know where to go. I'm going to double check that all my screws, my purse feet are good. Then I'm going to grab some electrical tape and if my scissors cut I'm going to stick even though the screw is flat it's still metal and if it brushes up against with the bottom it can still like wear and tear it faster so err on the side of caution and use a little bit of tape Right. We have that. So then we're going to grab one of our main panel pieces and you want to make sure you have your centers. Finding your centers is absolutely key in here. So I have a, a little triangle snip right here to mark my centers. I am going to match the bottom of my two V's and then I'm going to put a clip right where I'm supposed to stop like right above it and I'm going to sew this three eighths of an inch remove all these you want to sew your three eighths of an inch at your three eighths of an inch stopping and starting point Need the back stitch on this part. <laughs> if I can think of threads. Okay. Three eighths of an inch. And 
stopping right at that 3 8 of an inch mark right here. I'm back stitching a couple steps. Trimming your threads. Now we're, we're going to trim only the bottom. But before we do that, where this 3 8 of an inch mark is, we're going to do a snip only up to that 3 8 of an inch on our main panel pieces. It's just a little snip. Don't go above it. And then we're going to trim our bottom piece down to 1 8 of an inch. Not, not the main panel, just the bottom piece. And then we're going to bring this over to the machine and we're going to have the seams facing the bottom and we're going to top stitch from the 3 8 of it from that where the white chalk mark from 3 8 of an inch to the other chalk mark. We're going to pull long tails. We're not going to back stitch. We're going to pull the threads to the back. 1 8 of an inch. This, take this out and we're going to tug on one of our um, our bobbin thread thread and it's automatically going to help us bring up our top thread and then we're just going to tie this off I usually do like three or four knots you could put a drop of fray check if you wish it doesn't hurt we're gonna do the same thing here like fray check or um, whatever glue you have available. I hate the smell of this glue, but it works really. <laughs> I mean, who's like, ooh, I love the smell of glue. I mean, you would kind of side that. I'm like, what? Okay. Somebody needs to go back and look at your own. Okay, I said double-sided tape. That is the difference. <laughs> there is a huge difference between glue and double-sided tape. But what's on the double-sided tape? Okay, but it's not the same. You're, it's not the same. And maybe because I know the double-sided tape is going to have like, is really going to help me. Like, I'm going to be like, yes. Double-sided tape. Alright, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to pull our Threads together, Shinova. All right, so we're going to um, attach the bottom exterior to one of the main panel pieces, sewing at three eighths of an inch, back stitching in the beginning and the end at three eighths of an inch where that square is, so that way you don't go past that. So right here where that black line is, that's where I'm going to stop and go back a few stitches. I'm going to trim my threads. And then I'm going to snip in 3 eighths of an inch on the main panel, not the main panel bottom. Come around and trim the main panel exterior bottom to 1 eighth of an inch. Right. We're going to I'm going to take the bulk of this, 
this over, put the seam down towards the bottom, and we are going to have long tails because we're not going to back stitch with the all the seams facing towards the bottom. You're going to start at your three eighth of the inch mark and start sewing. Remember not to back stitchy, not to back stitch. Clip in the arsenal is everywhere. Okay. Let's see. Let me move this needle nose pliers out of the way. Okay, we're going to bring this around and pull up the bottom thread and it will bring up a loop for the top. And pull it through. through gives it a nice clean finish and no back stitches on the bottom and it just it looks really nice okay and then blue because that's what I did on one side Okay. After we're done with that part, we're going to go to page 26. We are going to stitch our exteriors down well we're going to we pull through the bobbin now we're going to clip exteriors together so you're just clipping your um your interiors just up and out of the way just focusing on the exterior pieces matching them and I'm going to go ahead and pop some clips on this side We're going to sew this down three eighths of an inch from the beginning and the end. Top stitch, a uh, top stitch, back stitch really well in the beginning and the end. Making sure that the lining is completely out of the way.
Okay, we're going to go on where figure 94 is. We're going to match the bottom. I have a V cut in the middle for the center panel and I'm going to open up the seam allowance and put that first clip there. And because we cut that 3 eighths of an inch little square, everything will match up nice and tight, like just really pretty. Okay, and then I'm going to do that on the other side. Find the centers. Finding the centers always makes your job so much more easier. I know it's like a nuisance sometimes to like cut little triangles or marks, but it will help in the long run, in the grand scheme of things. Okay, and we're going to sew right sides together using the 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And thank goodness I have foam because it's going to get a little bit squishy. my clips are holding up. I always like to backstitch over any seam. I have no idea why, but that's, it's my thing. And then we're going to trim that seam allowance down to one eighth of an inch. the other side. Trim that up and we are going to now sew the linings down together and clip them. And we're going to use our um, seam allowance of three eighths of an inch. Sorry, I see a wrinkle. I'm trying to. Maneuver it out.
Okay, so in the next step, you can like just turn it and you can do most of the, um, you do the rest of the lining through the slip pocket. Although I like that method, if you are, if you, if you accidentally sewed your pocket and you're like, yeah, there's no turning back, I've already done, gone this far, this is what I would do. This is what I normally do with every bag, no matter. I would sew just to where the seam allowance is on the lining panels, three eighths of an inch. And then I would bring the thread over and do the same on this side. Okay, so now I'm going to trim these and I'll show you because this, this is a really soft bag. Unless you're doing this like full blown leather, this bag is really, really soft. My uh, thread wanted to shred a little bit. That sometimes happens with glue or double sided tape with my bag, I mean with my machine. So I would open this up open up the seam allowances or you could do one seam on one side and however whatever your preference is because you can do this whole bottom part in um through the lining i love doing that on a, especially a really state like a really rugged bag like that has tons of structure but this bag is it even it's going to have structure in the end but it's soft. It's used, we're using foam. That's the beauty about foam. And then I'm just going to trim this down. Trim these threads because apparently I didn't do it the first time. <laughs> and then I'm going to do that on this side as well. of an inch I just one reason why I do it is the, I'm like I'm already here so let me just get this this part done <laughs> all right so we're gonna turn our bag birth it um, I just put my hand inside and I grab a corner and you can pull through it should depending on the vinyls you use. I'm using um, backstitch vinyl, um, 626. It glows in the dark too. Um, it should work really well. And if you duct tape your, your purse feet, they won't be scratching you when you're, <laughs> you're flipping it. going to poke out my corners right now making sure everything caught because this is where you would uh, need to fix it our bag is really taking shape. <laughs> See the cute little bottom of the bag. All right, so we have that. We now can um, Close up the bottom so you can you grab your pocket and out of your pocket you can grab your lining
and you close it up. And you can do your, um, if you want to, you can, that's when you can do your uh, squaring up your your uh, corners, but I did that in the last step, so I don't really have to worry about that right now. I'm just doing the three-eighths of an inch, or you can do it a little bit more if you want to even talk tighter, but you have to, uh, Alexis made the pattern pieces so that way that you don't have to um, bear off a little bit. to stuff my lining back into my bag but before I do that I'm just going to poke out all corners in my lining and that way it's easier then I'm going to take my pocket lining and close it up Close it up at one eighth of an inch or one fourth, whatever is easier for you. I poked out all my stuff in my lining is so that way um, one I could tuck my pocket in or <laughs> my zipper pocket in and then two it just everything's poked in so poked out as best as would be so it'll just make it easier when I put the lining back in just have to use my fingers see how like it's like so it's like nice and tough no saggy lining All right, well then we're going to grab our zippers that you're going to use. I'm using one stitch and then one that says handmade. I'm going to grab my stitch and I'm going to make sure the zippers are even as they possibly can. Look it down. Yeah. And then I'm going to, I kind of always like to bring it right up to close to the second one and then I'll put the, side, the other one on just to make sure there's no weird circle bubble thingy. Just going to finger press this cotton part down. All right, so then we're going to take the bolt and just kind of flatten it out and put some clips. A 
I'm opening up any seam allowances so that way it could stay flat as possible. So I'm going to put this on the side real quick and then we're going to grab our strap first. I'm going to do the medium. I always tend to have a tendency of using the medium. I put a line down the center and then I have some double sided tape. I'm going to leave like a one eighth of a gap, inch of a gap in the middle so this will fold onto itself. In here just to ensure that there's no movement and we're going to um, sew one eighth of an inch on both sides I just do a back stitch because the back stitch will be caught in the um, it won't be seen because I'm going to be using um, strap connector not strap connector strap ends Cross because again, this will be in the strap ends too. Now, if you're like, hey, I don't strap ends or just not, I don't have it in my budget, I'm going to show you what you can do optional that looks just as good, if not better, because it's it's not, it's a nice finish instead of folding it in and ca causing more bulk. You can, like, this is the extra piece. You can measure exactly what this is and then just sew it across. And you have, you fold it in on itself too. And you sew it just across and you have a really nice clean strap in. So you, these are from your scraps. You can do that. Um, I'm going to be, I want to use these uh, rainbow ones, but the problem with those is that I have to wait until the strap is actually in the all the hardware is in because they won't fit through the rain. So the next thing we have are these crazy little eights. <laughs> that's not the pattern piece name. That's just what I need. <laughs> so on this with your crazy eights, you have your pattern piece, your stabilizer piece, and then there's a rivet placement piece. So I'm going to put the rivet placement. What we're going to do is we are going to put, measure out one eighth, not one eighth, one fourth of an inch away from the stabilizer all the way around. What I used was my little measuring gauge that has to, where did I put it to? I had a measuring gauge here. So, okay, but <laughs> it's a measuring gauge and I just measured one, uh, one fourth around. You can do the same thing with the ruler. You can just measure one fourth around and make little ticks and then just connect the dots. And then from there, we are going to make some snips. Um, I just start with your center snips to ensure it looks good. And then we're just going to cut out some triangles. Not going past that, um, oh yeah, I was right here. So like you, I did one fourth of an inch and I just drew a tack each place. Um, 
we're going to draw, cut out some triangles, not going past that line that we drew for ourselves at the one fourth of an inch from the stabilizer. Take your time. We're still cutting. Um, get this piece that wanted to hang on for dear life. So we're going to do this, we're almost done with that part, and then I'll show you how we're going to put these together. It's really quite brilliant. It looks really, has a really nice end result. You do, my best suggestion is to take your time with these snips and make sure they're not too thin or not too wide and, and it doesn't go past that fourth of an inch you drew. So. You're going to put double sided tape like you see on figure 122 and then you're going to lift one side and you're going to wrap this around. Yeah, it's a really neat method. So all the raw edges are going to be in. More double sided tape there. And let me grab. This and I don't think I snipped enough. There we go. And that's why we did the, the bigger triangle so that these could lay flatter and It could take a little while and you will some I had to reposition my tape uh, several times on one of them and then I realized that I just needed to get more double-sided tape on that one particular side and it's okay take your time and you definitely could do this with glue it would just be a, like clipping clipping them down Oh, 
Okay. And so what I do from this, the opposite side, is I get my seam roller and I try to lay it as flat as possible. And if I see like a bulk, I try to reposition that one. Just roll. Take your time and because it's going to come out really, really cute because they're, um, it's like a little crazy. <laughs> That's what I kept calling it. So, what we're going to do is we're going to bring it over here. We're going to top stitch it and you're going to pull the threads to the back. So, we're going to have long threads. And I generally start in the center and we're going to sew it down at one eighth of an inch. Do not backstitch. If you do, it's not the end of the world, but if you want a cleaner look, pull the thread to the back. And if on your way, a piece wants to get finicky, you can definitely use a sewing owl. And if you want to snazz it up with having different color thread, that would be a nice feature. If you're like me and your machine is acting a donkey, <laughs> have the same color thread so nobody can see your mistakes. <laughs> I get to this part I like to pull the bottom thread and bring the top thread to the bottom for this so that way I can get into that hole that I closed up okay and then I'm going to bring that top thread through here and I'm going to tie it off then you just trim your threads what I did is that we need to have two pieces of tape here and here to help adhere to the bag so what I did is I took one one piece of the tape and just hid all my tells in it so that way they were kind of glued down a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to transfer on at least one side the, where to punch my holes for my rivets. I did the same on this. Because then I could, when I fold it over, I could just punch the holes and, it'll, and everything will line up. So this is the fun and scary part. <laughs> it is more fun than scary. I'm grabbing clips that don't leave uh, labels and vinyl and or cork or what have you. Binder clips are preferable. 
All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our bag. We're going to first hold on, grab our bag. I'm going to grab my D rings. I just had them. Okay. I didn't have D rings. I, I went to the table. If you're wondering where I got the blue hardwood from, I purchased it from Sol Duce. I will put her information for her Facebook group or the where her shop is in the comments. I mean the comments in the description. So I have my I have my clips. We're going to put glue. If you look at figure 125, we're gonna put glue around this area and i know this is super scary trust me i was like what no glue is my nemesis so what i did is i took off the double-sided tape first on one i need that oh i'm sorry you couldn't see because i'm about to put that on i wasn't taking it i'm just gonna hold it up until you're ready okay let's see So there, there is a small area where the glue needs to be. Um, you can use Guterman. You can use whatever glue that you have that I just say a thicker glue that doesn't drip. Um, you're going to put the glue around these er the areas that indicate it and do it on both sides. Oh, I hate this one. And we're going to now put this on a portion of the bag clamp and clamp your connectors and pieces together and you need to clamp until it's fully dry so what you're going to do is you're going to position the widest part of the connector widest part of the connector to where the raw edges of the zipper is and tuck the connector and the clamp. So I'm going to carefully unclamp this will be first foremost. Hold this down and we're going to just tuck in any in, in, it's already wanting to stick. So that's not a bad thing. And we're going to clamp down clamp that there's a reason why we're using binder clips because you, you're going to want to keep it here until it's done drying okay that's one side we're going to do the other side and then i'm going to explain to you what you're going to do for how you're going to thread this it's fairly easy it just takes um you're just going to need to be a little patient let the glue dry it that is my best suggestion for you is just let the glue dry this glue the um the guterman it's taken off my nail polish so just just on the back for you so i use the magnetac for the black bag and it worked really well but I'm going to use this glue that smells horrible and <laughs> just like a little circle. On both sides. Don't go past your thread line because it, if it in case it runs, you just want that barrier where if it has to go down there, it has, a little bit more to go. Okay, so move these clips. Be 
you hear a TV in the background, that's my youngest, my son listening to apparently something on YouTube. Um, you can use, you can use uh, these clips when they don't pop off in your face, but um, they can leave creases. All right, so we're going to allow this to dry. allowing this to dry. And then what you would do from here, what you would do from here is, um, where's my chalk pencil? You would mark one and a half inches. Let me move this to the side. You would do mark one and a half inches from both short ends. At least this is what I do because you want to fold it over one and a half inches. And because, again, I cannot put these through without, like, trying to jam it in, what I've learned is to put it through here, add the, add the, the strap in, then do the same thing on the other, and then I will just pull punch it, pull punch it, rivet it in place on both ends. But I didn't think this through. <laughs> I can't, uh, I can, well, I can show you this part. I just won't rivet anything so you can get a gist of what it's like. So I have my marks here. I'm going to grab my screwdriver, screw. And these strap-ins come from um, Serial Bag Maker. I just like the way they look. They just look really chic. So you want to um, put your strap, I'm trying not to jostle the clips. I'm gonna put your strap in and Wow, that glue like totally destroyed my nail polish. Like destroyed. It's like waggly. <laughs> it looks really weird. It's all mushy. <clears throat> Screwing in the screw. And then I'm going to Bring this around on the other end and do the same thing. I'm just going to have to take one of these little baby screws. This one. Kiss my microphone. And shimmy that strap in and Okay, <laughs> this is why I always have extra screws because I drop them notoriously. So once this dried and I have the straps in, I would um, fold at the one and a half inch strap mark that I made with chalk, rivet that, do the same thing on this side, 
and it would be all done. I would finger press this down just to help. Uh, when you use foam, your bag likes to puff out. It just, it's a, it's a thing. Like you can press it and it'll just pop back up. It's just the extra air. Um, if you, if you did this with Decoville and you had like just a regular finish, you won't have this issue and just press these, roll it down with my finger with between the seam. But right now I'm not going to do that because the pink is literally transferring to everything. My nail polish. Um, and that would be it. You would be done with this really classy looking bag. You would take your rivets and you would punch a hole through the top layer on the side, on the side and place rivets. Um, I will have a picture. My thumbnail will be the picture of this bag being done. I generally like to let that glue to dry. I, I, probably an hour to two hours. Um, and I think yesterday I left mine to dry for three hours because it was still kind of tacky after an hour. And that will be it. You're all done. You just really made this high chic classy bag that has like a cute little bottom exterior and I did the tufting. Um, you can do just the nice sleek, just showing off the fabric. You can also do the quilting, which is really beautiful. And you're all finished. Um, so if you have questions in reference to this pattern, please, please, please um, drop a comment down below. I'm more than willing to answer anything. If you like it, if you can like, subscribe, share if you think it's worthy. It helps out the tremendous catch the channel tremendously and I hope I see some of your bags in the Orosa show off group and we all can just be like our bags are amazing I love this asymmetrical look it's just really high end and cheek and you can have fun you've seen that I made one with black and cork uh, black cork with gold and then now you see this beautiful 626 and you can have fun with this pattern um Thank you for sewing with me and I will make sure that there is a picture of the done bag at the, so in the, the thumbnail so you can definitely see it. And if you're in the Facebook group, you'll definitely see it. Until the next time I see you, I hope you have a wonderful day and happy sewing. Bye.